Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 22 and in this lecture we are going to do examples concerning collision theory. So the first example is that of a ball rolling down an inclined plane. So you can see this is an inclined plane which makes an angle beta from the horizontal and there is a ball okay let's say it's a spherical ball and it's rolling down the inclined plane all right So the velocity is V and therefore since it is rolling without slipping, so it's rolling without slipping, so V will be equal to omega R, isn't it? So what we have to find out as it hits the ground over here, so as it rolls down and it's going to then hit the ground then what's the velocity and omega of the ball after hitting the ground so we have to find out what is v plus and omega plus after it hits the ground notice that this is a planar example Okay, it's a planar example. So if we draw our coordinate system as follows, this is I, then we have J, and what comes out of the paper is K, then V dot K is basically zero. The planar case. Likewise, omega has got only k component, omega k. Alright? Okay. Let us also assume that when the ball hits the ground, the coefficient of restitution e is equal to 0. Okay? So, how do we find out the velocities and omega of the ball after it hits the ground? So V plus has got then two unknowns because its k component is zero, right? Likewise, omega plus has got just one unknown. So we need three equations. Correct? And also the ground here. So this has got friction. So the collision is not smooth, it's, it's a non-smooth collision. Alright, so how do we really find out the three unknowns? So we had done the general case where the unknowns were, you can recall they were So in the general case, you can recall we had 12 unknowns, it's so all a three-dimensional collision. You can see here the second body, which is the ground. So ground is the second body. And that's massive, right? So that means the velocity and omega of the ground is not going to be affected and since it is zero before collision it's going to remain zero even after collision. 
So from 12 unknowns in the general case, we are reduced to 6 unknowns. And furthermore, since it's a planar case, therefore we have only 3 unknowns. Right? Because it's a planar case. And that's because it's massive. All right, so we need those three equations. So if you recall those 12 equations, then the three equations that would be required here would be number one, the collision law. Along the normal. Right, which you can see from the picture. As the ball hits the ground, the normal is along J direction. So that's J cap. The number two equation, since it's a non smooth collision, so we have to take into account the impulse due to friction force also. Okay, we have to address or we have to account for. Impulse due to friction in I direction. All right, and number three is simply angular momentum balance of the ball above the point of collision. And also notice that it's just one equation because we know that the omega is only along k cap. Okay. So let's write down these three equations one by one. So before that, maybe we write down v minus and omega minus for the ball. So omega minus, if we talk about what is omega minus, that's simply the V minus divided by little r, right? The little r is the radius of the ball. And you can see since it's rolling down the inclined plane, the omega is actually along positive k. Okay, so this is along positive k. What about v minus itself so v minus would be the magnitude v minus into now look at the direction here so just before the collision the velocity of the center of mass of the ball is parallel to the inclined plane but going down right so we have to resolve it into two components one along i and the along and along j and both are in the negative direction as you can see right so so this is then cos beta i plus sine beta j with a minus sign okay so that's the v1 minus and this is omega 1 minus now if i say the contact point the point of contact, let's say, is O. Then what's the velocity of the contact point on the sphere, which would be A, isn't it? So what is VA minus? So VA minus is nothing but V1 minus plus omega 1 minus cross product the position vector of A related to C1 right which is minus V minus cos beta I cap plus sine beta J cap plus V minus over R K cap cross product 
R A little to C one, which is minus little R J cap, right? So you can see here K cross J is the minus of I, and there's one more minus, so it's total plus. So what we have here is V minus into one minus cos beta i cap minus v minus sin beta j cap okay so you can see that the velocity of the contact point its ith component this is greater than zero whatever be the beta cos beta will always be less than one so the ith component velocity of the contact point is more than zero, right? So it's actually pointing in the positive i direction. So if you look at the picture, the contact point is moving forward. Okay, so the contact point has got velocity in the forward direction. Therefore, on the ball, the friction that will be acting on the ball will be in the backward direction, right? So this also implies that friction on the ball will act in negative i direction because friction always opposes the relative motion. Okay, very interesting. So, now we have to find out what is the normal impulse. So, for that, we simply have to use the collision law, right? So, the collision law says V B plus minus V A plus dot with n right this is equal to v a minus minus v b minus dot with n right and then so the left hand side this is the separation velocity where this is the approach velocity right and the approach velocity has to be multiplied with an e isn't it so we have to have an e here okay but in this case since e is equal to zero that's given this is equal to zero that implies v b plus dot n is equal to v a plus dot n okay but you see what is v b plus the velocity of the ground because b is the ground here and ground is not affected so v b plus is zero so that implies v e plus dot with n that's equal to zero okay that's really interesting that the velocity of the contact point on the ball in the normal direction is zero okay okay so how is this really going to help us so we have to write v a plus in terms of the velocity of the center of mass and its omega. So this implies V1 plus plus omega plus cross product position vector of A related to C1 and this we dot with N that's equal to 0. Right? Okay. 
so v1 plus dot with n plus omega plus k cap right omega 1 plus k cap cross product minus r j cap and this we dot with n cap you see it is equal to 0 but you see j and n are in the same direction so this is actually 0 right so this simply implies v1 plus dot n is equal to 0 so basically the velocity of the center of mass of the ball after collision has got no component in the j direction so this was one of the unknowns you can recall and we have gotten it but we haven't yet found out what is v1 plus dot i cap so for that of course we have to use the friction law in the j direction all right so so we now use a second equation which tells us that the change in linear momentum of the ball during the collision so mass times v1 plus minus v1 minus dot with i cap right this should be equal to the impulse due to friction and friction as you can you could see earlier it's also acting in the positive i direction sorry friction is acting in the negative i direction right so we'll have a minus sign here into friction coefficient mu k integral n dt right from t minus to t plus but what will be this integral n dt you can recall from the previous class this is simply mass of the ball into v1 plus minus v1 minus dot with j cap isn't it okay so we have almost everything now So v1 plus dot i cap, that was the unknown. So we'll just keep it here, v1 plus dot i cap minus v1 minus dot i cap. Now have a look at the earlier equation. So here is your v1 minus. So v1 minus dot i cap is simply minus v minus cos beta. So we put it here minus v minus cos beta. Okay. And this is equal to, we can come back here, minus mu k into m. And we just found out that v1 plus dot j is 0 so from here because n cap and j cap are the same so we are left with minus v1 minus dot j and we again go back and see what is v1 minus dot j so from here v1 minus dot j is minus v minus sine beta okay so we can put it here so this is finally minus mu k into v1 minus sine beta correct And so finally we have V1 plus dot I cap 
is equal to minus v minus into cos theta plus mu k sin beta. Okay, I'll just use the subscript one everywhere. All right, so that's the velocity. So we have found out the two velocity components v1 plus dot i and v1 plus dot j. Right, you can see here. I. So having found the velocity, we now have to find out the omega. So for that, we have to use angular momentum balance about the contact point, which is O. So because the frictional impulse as well as the normal impulse, they are both passing through O. So we had seen earlier that the angular momentum of the ball will be preserved above O, right? So H of the ball, which is the body one, right? So related to O in the inertial frame. So this plus should be same as H of the body one minus, right? Related to O. All right, so, and you see, we have to only think of the k component here because angular momentum has got only k component, i, j, r, all k. So we have to dot this with k. All right, so the plus one would be inertia tensor about one of the body one and this is about C1, right? The center of mass of body one into omega one plus plus position vector of C1 related to O cross product mass times velocity of body 1 plus right and this has to be equal to i c 1 into omega 1 minus plus r c 1 led to o cross product mass times velocity 1 minus okay and we have to take its k component remember we have to dot this with k now what will be this number here i c 1 omega 1 plus dot with k. Notice that omega 1 plus itself is in k direction. An inertia tensor of a sphere is diagonal. Can you recall? So the thing inside the bracket is simply 2 by 5 m r square omega 1 plus. Okay? And with a k, and this has to be further dotted with k. All right, so it becomes one. Then the next term here, R C one related to O, that's going to point in the positive j direction. So this is simply little r j cross product mass into v one plus, which which we have just found out. So v one plus has got no j component but it has got an i component which is minus v1 minus into cos beta plus mu k sine beta right 
and the direction is i direction it has got no j direction so that's uh, vn plus and on the right hand side is then ic1 into omega1 minus dot k as earlier it's going to be 2 or 5 m r square omega 1 minus okay plus r j cross product mass times the velocity and what is v1 minus we can again look back so that's your v1 minus So it is for minus v1 minus into cos beta i plus sine beta j. Okay, and we have to remember we have to dot this with k, and this also gets dotted with k. Okay, so this tells me 2 by 5 m r square omega 1 plus plus you see j and j will have no term so the, the, here we have got j cross i so j cross i is minus of k and k dot k is 1 so we get 1 minus sign and there's another minus 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 plus so we have here m r v1 minus into cos beta plus mu k sin beta okay and on the right hand side we have 2 by 5 m little r square omega 1 minus which is v1 minus divided by little r okay then again the last term so j cross i will be minus of k and there is another minus 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 plus so this is simply plus m r v1 minus cos beta okay and you can see that one of the cos betas from the left hand side is cancelling with the cos beta from the right hand side right okay finally we have 2 by 5 m r square omega 1 plus is equal to m r v 1 minus into 2 by 5 you see from the right hand side minus mu k sine beta okay and then your m cancels here little r cancels here and this simply implies omega 1 plus is equal to v1 minus into 2 by 5 minus mu k sine beta into 5 over 2 okay so that's your Omega one plus. So this completes this problem. So we got V one plus as well as Omega one plus. Finally, if we also look at the original problem, you see what's happening. As the ball hits the ground, there's a collision. And there is an instant change in the velocity and omegas and as you see from the final solution the velocities and omegas that we have gotten do not really satisfy the rolling without slipping condition notice here this is v1 plus if you divide this by r do you get omega 1 plus you don't get it look at this equation so it does not satisfy rolling without slipping condition so that means 
after collision the ball is going to go on the surface horizontal surface and the friction will keep acting right but as it keeps going the friction will try to make the ball roll without slip after certain time all right so can we find out what will be the velocity and omega of the ball when it finally starts to roll without slip so that's the next question what is the velocity and omega of ball once it starts to roll without slip okay so how do you find this out so you might think that okay so we have gotten the velocity and omega just after collision so after that we would also know how much is the friction force acting because friction will be simply mu times n and after collision n is equal to mg so friction is mu times mg so you know you have to integrate this over that finite time and find out when exactly it is start to roll without slip and then further find out what is the velocity of omega at that instant okay so this is like solving the dynamics equation the another interesting way is that you could still apply angular momentum conservation let me show you how you can do that So I will redraw the picture. So basically we have the ball just after collision and then after some time the ball may have come here and here it's undergoing rolling without slip. Right? So omega is then V by R. Okay. Now, why don't we still think of doing angular momentum balance about the point O right here? You see, for at any intermediate instant, so if I draw this as the intermediate instant. What are the external forces acting on the ball? So we have the normal from the ground, which is finite now. We have the gravity mg, right? And finally, we also have the friction. And you can recall friction was acting in the forward direction mu n and when you do force balance you get that mg is equal to n because there is no movement in the vertical direction and this implies friction is equal to mu mg but let's try to find out the moment of all these external forces about the point o so about the point O, which is fixed to the ground, okay, this is fixed to the ground. The moment due to N will exactly cancel the moment due to Mg, right? Because they are equal and opposite. Not only this, even the moment due to the friction, you see, even after collision, in the intermediate state also, the friction force is passing through. Therefore, moment due to friction is also due. So that's a really interesting observation. That moment due to all the external forces are zero.
about the fixed point O. Right? So if we write down the angular momentum balance equation, then it simply is that angular momentum of the body about the fixed point related to I and then we do its d by dt related to I. This is simply moment external about the point O minus position vector of center of mass C1 related to O cross product mass times acceleration of O related to I. Isn't it? But since acceleration of O is zero, the second term is zero. Furthermore, moment external about O is also zero. So this is equal to zero. So that means even after a finite time, the angular momentum will be the same. So final angular momentum is same as the initial angular momentum. So no change in angular momentum. About O. Okay, so we can write down angular momentum at the instant of rolling without slip equals the angular momentum right after collision which actually is also equal to angular momentum right before collision okay now what's the angular momentum at the instant of rolling without slipping so at the instant of rolling without slipping you have this ball which is going in the negative i direction right with some velocity v and you have the omega and omega is of course in the positive direction so about o the angular momentum about o is then angular momentum about its own center of mass which we just figured out it is 2 by 5 mr square into omega plus the position vector of c1 related to o cross product mass times velocity and velocity is simply omega r isn't it so we can write here omega r but in which direction? That's minus i. And what is this number here? That is whatever the distance covered from O, which is minus L i plus little r j. That's this number. Okay? And then we have to dot this with k. But you see this L, which is an unknown here, anyway cancels because Li cross product this number into I. So this anyway cancels. So we have this finally 2 by 5 m r squared into omega. And then the second one, j cross I is minus of k and minus of k dot with k is 1 and there is another minus so it is finally plus so this is plus 
m r square omega and that's equal to angular momentum after collision which is also equal to angular momentum before collision and you have this equation here you see this is the angular momentum before collision right so we could also use that and this becomes V minus into 2 by 5 MR, right? And what's the second term? So V minus 2 by 5 MR plus MR cos beta plus MR cos beta. And you can see the MRs cancel. So we have omega r into 1 plus 2 by 5 is equal to v minus into 2 by 5 plus cos beta, which implies the omega at the instant of rolling without slipping is v minus over r into 2 by 5 plus cos beta divided by 1 plus 2 by 5 okay let's work out another problem which is actually three dimensional okay a 3d problem so let us suppose we have a platform And then there's a disk. That's the, the corner point, say that is point C, and the corresponding corner point on the disk is A. The disk is horizontal. It is horizontal and then it is being dropped. Okay, so when it drops, points A and C collide, and it's given that E is equal to zero. Furthermore, it's a smooth collision. Okay. And if we think of drawing the coordinate system, then it is as follows. Here is the I and this is J in the plane of the disk. And the point A that you see here, this makes an angle alpha from the ith direction. All right. So we have to find out what is the angular velocity of the disk. What is the angular velocity omega? 1 plus after collision okay for the disk and assume that the disk is very thin assume the disk to be thin All right, so how do we solve this problem? See, again, the platform, the platform is massive. So 
So that means nothing happens to the platform. Right? So this implies our unknowns are V1 plus and omega 1 plus. And we can use the coded system that is given in the problem to get the three components of V1 plus and omega 1 plus. Okay, along I, J, and Q. Alright, it's also given that E is equal to 0, so that's going to be useful also. Anyway, so what equations should we be using to find out the six unknowns? We have six unknowns with us. So number one is of course the collision law. Then the velocity of the disk. To be more precise, it is velocity components. In direction perpendicular to impulse. To impulsive force, right? should be preserved because it's a smooth collision. And this direction is nothing but the vertical direction, G. And that's because it's a smooth collision. So these are the three equations. So here, so number two has got two equations. And this has got one equation. And finally, the angular momentum conservation for the disk. Right? About C. Right? So this has got three equations. So 3 to 5 plus 1, 6 equations in total. Alright? So Using the second point here, we can say that V1 plus dot with I is equal to V1 plus dot with K and that should be equal to 0 because you see V1 minus V1 minus has got only vertical component. Let's say it is V0, so it's minus V0 J as it drops down. So since V1 minus has got no I and K components, so V1 plus will also have no I and K components, because it's a smooth collision. Right? So this has been found out exploiting the point number two. Alright, so this means V1 plus is some unknown v into j right and v1 minus we have just written down this sum minus v0 into j all right now we have to think of using the collision law so collision law simply tells us that vb plus minus va plus dot with n is equal to v a minus minus v b minus dot with n but the body b in this case you see the point b has to be on the body b which is massive and that has got no velocity right so that simply implies this is not there Correct? 
Now what will be V A plus? So we have got minus of V A plus and it has to be dotted with N which is J in this case. So V A plus is nothing but V 1 plus plus omega 1 plus cross product position vector of A related to C1 center of the disk right so that's V A plus and this has to be dotted with J this is equal to V A minus and V A minus the disk originally has got no omega 1 minus so omega 1 minus is equal to 0 it is simply going down translating so v a minus is same as v 1 minus which is minus v naught j dot with j okay but you see it also comes with an e and we said that E is equal to 0. So we have to multiply this with 0 and so this, is, this becomes 0. Alright. So this implies V1 plus dot with J which we have said to be the unknown V here. Right. This is V. Plus omega 1 plus. So let us break omega into the three components. So it has got omega 1 x i plus omega 1 y j plus omega 1 z k and these are all plus. Cross product r a led to c1 and you see that point a makes an angle alpha from the i. So if the radius of the disk is small r, then point A is related to C1 can be written as follows. Cos alpha i plus sine alpha j. Right? And there will of course be one r also for the radius. And this whole thing has to be dotted with j. And that's equal to 0. Alright, so this implies this is V0, the unknown V0, plus, now we have to do a cross product. And we just need to get the J component. Mistaken, so this one only gives us the J component. This all gives you components which are not along J. Okay, so. Having seen that so k cross i is j and j dot j is 1, so this gives me plus omega 1 z plus into r into cos alpha that's equal to 0. So, of course, this is another equation. And finally, we think of angular momentum balance for the disk. So this implies angular momentum of the body 1 about the point of collision which could be C and after collision, it's same as angular momentum of the body 1 before collision about C, which is I about C1 into omega 1 plus plus position vector of C1 related to C cross product mass times velocity 1 plus that's equal to i about c1 into omega 1 minus plus position vector of c1 related to c 
cross product m b1 minus but omega 1 minus is 0 so this is gone and what can we say about the inertia tensor so you see right now we have a vector equation let us write this down in the coordinate system that's given in the problem in IGK coordinate system so the inertia tensor I about C1 for the disk so about the key axis this is m r square by 2 because it's a thin disk and about the other two axes we can use perpendicular axis theorem and it should simply be half of the one about the key axis by 4 and m r square by 4 and rest all are 0 because they are also the principal axis okay so that's your i so we can come back here and this implies that number maybe we take m r square by 4 as common m r square by 4 1 1 2 into omega 1 plus we said it is omega 1 x omega 2 sorry omega 1 y and omega 1 z plus r c 1 let it c so that has got one minus sign also and this is cos alpha sin alpha and of course we get 1r minus r cross product mass times v1 plus and v1 plus we just figured out this 0 v0 and 0 and this is equal to minus little r Again, cos alpha, sin alpha, 0, cross product, mass times V1 minus, which is 0, and then minus V0 and 0. Okay, well, the one on the right, left hand side, the V1 plus has got just V. Okay, so this gives me three equations. Maybe we can work it out a little more. So this becomes m r squared by 4 omega 1 x omega 1 y omega 1 z plus minus r cos alpha sin alpha 0 cross product mass times 0 v 0 and this is equal to minus little r cos alpha sin alpha 0 cross product mass times 0 minus v naught and 0 okay so this gives us three equations And there's another equation here. The 3 plus 1, 4 equations for the 4 unknowns. Right? Alright, so this is how we can solve the collision problem again, which was a 3D case, but not so complicated. Okay, since we have time, let's now work on another problem. Right? So this is again a planar problem. So we have a smooth surface here and there is a rod which is in the inclined position making an angle beta. Okay. And just before it hits the ground, it is simply translating downward with a speed v all right 
So we have to find out what is the omega of the rod after collision. So what's the omega of the rod after collision? So it's given that the surface is frictionless. So we only have normal impulse. There is no frictional impulse. So it's a smooth collision. So it's a smooth collision. Furthermore, it has got some E, but not equal to zero. Okay. So let us set up the coded system here. So we have I and J and K is coming out of the paper. So before collision, we have V1 minus that's equal to minus Vj and omega 1 minus that's equal to 0, right? The body 2 here, which is the ground, so ground is massive, right? So nothing is going to happen to it. So our unknowns are just V1 plus, which has got two unknowns, but it's a planar problem and omega 1 plus which is also because planar has got just one unknown omega k so we need three equations just as in the first problem that we dealt today three equations required of course first is the collision law along the normal direction the second is the velocity of the the velocity of the center of mass of rod will be preserved along I cap, right? Because it's a frictionless contact or smooth collision. And third, of course, is the angular momentum balance. So just these three equations and we are done. So if we use the second point, that simply tells us V2, sorry, it's again one only, V1 plus dot with I cap will be equal to V1 minus dot with I cap, which is 0, right? Now, we have to think of using the collision law. So that's the VB plus minus VA plus dot with I cap, which in this case is J, so dot with normal, which is j, is equal to e times v a minus minus v b minus dot with j cap. But v b, which is for the ground, is zero. So these are gone. So that implies minus of v a plus dot with j is equal to e times V A minus dot with J. But because the rod is initially just translating, V A minus is same as V1 minus, and then this dot is with J, which is minus E times V naught. Right? Because the rod was going down with the speed V. Okay, let's make it V naught. Right. Now, VA plus, we have to write it in terms of 
the center of mass velocity and omega so this is minus v1 plus plus omega plus k cap cross product position vector of center of mass sorry position vector of the point a related to the center c1 and this has to be dotted with j this is equal to minus e p naught so this implies v1 plus dot with j plus omega plus k cap cross product r a is related to c1 so have a look at the picture this is point a this is point c1 so it's pointing like this both i and j components have got negative number right so it comes to the minus sign minus l by 2 sin beta i cap plus cos beta j cap okay and this whole thing has to be dotted with j and this is equal to e times v naught all right so this is v1 plus dot with j and then you have k cross i becoming j so this is then going to have a minus sign minus omega plus l by 2 sine beta okay that's equal to e v naught so finally v1 plus dot with j is equal to omega plus l by 2 sine beta plus e v naught okay and the last is the angular momentum balance so we do a and b about the point of collision that's o so this implies h of the body 1 about o plus is equal to h of the body 1 minus about o so that's inertia tensor about c1 into omega 1 plus plus position vector of c1 is related to o cross product mass times v1 plus And you remember it's a planar case, so this has to be dotted with k. Okay. All right, and then same thing on the right hand side. I c one into omega one plus, sorry, omega one minus plus r c one so this is to o cross product mass times v1 minus this has to be also dotted with k but omega 1 minus is 0 so this is gone so on the left hand side we have to do i c1 omega 1 plus dot with k and you see because it's a planar case so we simply find out i z z about c1 of the ruler into omega plus so that's the kf component here all right because it's a planar case and I Z Z is the I of the rod 
about the k axis and passing through the center of mass. You may recall that's nothing but ml square by 12. Okay, then the next term RC1 related to O. So that's small r into sine beta i plus cos beta j cross product mass times v1 plus and we just found out what was v1 plus which has got only j component it has got no i component so this is Omega plus L by 2 sine beta plus EV naught J. Okay. And this whole thing has to be dotted with K. And that's again equal to R times sine beta plus cos beta j and this is i cross product mass times v1 minus and v1 minus was simply minus v0 j minus v0 j okay and this whole thing has to be dotted with k so this implies ml square by 12 into omega plus Plus the cross product here has to be done and has to be dotted with k. So we only have to take the component which is along k in the cross product. Alright. So that's going to be i and j. So i cross j gives you k. So this is plus m r l by 2 omega plus sine square beta all right and then there's an extra term also plus m r e v naught sine beta okay and then this is equal to on the right hand side we have with a minus sign m r sine beta into v naught right so as you can see this equation is only in terms of omega plus so we have omega plus into ml square by 12 plus mrl by 2 sine square beta and this is equal to mr sine beta v naught with a minus sign into 1 plus e okay so solve this and get your omega plus all right so i hope you could get some idea about how to solve collision problem so with this we are going to finish the lecture today okay thank you